In this video, we're going to look at how to use <clears throat> the concept of moles to solve some problems in general chemistry. Um, so we're going to start by recapping the, the mole and the two main unit conversions that go along with it. So when you have the concept of the mole, there are two directions that we, you can go. And it's going to turn out that in, future, in the future, we can actually increase the number of spokes or the number of places we can go from the mole as we learn new unit conversions in general chemistry. But right now there are two important ones that we have that allow us to go um, from the mole to the number of atoms or molecules and the mole to mass. So when we want to go between the mole and mass, meaning um, if we have a mass in grams and we want to figure out the number of moles, or if we have a number of moles and we want to figure out the mass, um, the way to do that is to use the molecular mass. Um, it's the form it, we're, we're going to start to summarize the molecular mass as this being equivalent to the formula weight because they're calculated in the same way. Um, so we're going to call this MW. This has units of grams per mole. So the fact that it has units of grams per mole allows us to go between grams and moles. And we can flip flop that what, what's on top. We can put grams on top or we could put moles on top depending on which direction we want to go in. Um, and then the other direction that we can go is from the moles to the number of things. And this is going to be through Avogadro's number. So this could be the number of atoms, molecules, ions, whatever it might be. And our unit conversion here is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of whatever it is per mole. And again, we can flip-flop that unit conversion. Um, we can put the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd on top, or we can put moles on top, depending on what direction we need to go in. Basically, we're just going to set up our start and end points, and then we can decide which goes on top and which goes on the bottom. So in lecture problem two, we're going to look at some examples of using mole and molar mass calculations. So in the first part of the problem, it says you need 0 0.0654 moles of zinc iodide to run a reaction. And then it says, how much zinc iodide do you need to weigh out in grams for this reaction? Okay, so let's identify our start and end points. And this will help us to identify which part of the conversion we need. So it gives us a number of moles, and then it basically asks us to, to get a number of grams. So we're going from 0 0.0654 moles to, uh, of zinc iodide. And it's asking us, well, how many grams of zinc iodide do we need? And so this one is going to be a moles to grams calculation. So we need the molecular weight in grams per mole. So let's get the molecular weight by adding up all the, the different co components of zinc iodide. So if you go to the periodic table and you find zinc, that's 65.39 grams. And there's one of them, so we're going to multiply that by one. And then we're going to add to it um, the mass of iodide, which is 126.90 grams. And there are two of them, so we're going to multiply that by two. So when you add this up, 65.39 grams times one plus 126.90 grams times two, that's going to equal 319.9 grams per mole. So now we have the unit conversion that we need in order to go between moles and grams. Okay, so we're going to set up our unit conversion. We're going to put moles on the bottom and grams on top. And that's because moles are going to cancel. So um, for every one mole, we have 319.9 grams. And so when we do that multiplication, we are going to get, so when you multiply 0 0.0654 times 319.9, you're going to get 20 0.87 grams of the zinc iodide. Now if you do this with significant figures, that's going to be 20.9 grams. So that's the final answer for that one. Okay, so let's look at the next one. It says, before the toxicity of lead was discovered, lead 2 chromate was used as a yellow pigment in paints. If a sample of a paint were found to contain 45.6 gram of lead, 45.6 grams of lead, how many moles are present? So in this case, this is going in the opposite direction. This setup is going to be one where you um, 
are going to basically do the same set of steps, but we're going to just flip-flop the conversion factor. So we have 45.6 grams of the lead to chromate, and you'll notice that this one has a little bit of a trick to it. Uh, the reason why there's a little bit of a trick is because you have to figure out what the chemical formula for lead to chromate is, and, and that is, that's going to require you to do some nomenclature. So lead to chromate is PbCrO4. And if you calculate the molecular weight of that by adding up the lead, the chromium, and the four oxygens, you're going to get 323.20 grams per mole. Okay, so in this case, and we want to get how many moles were present of the lead to chromate. So we're going to use our grams per mole conversion, except in this case, we're going to put the 323 0.20 grams on the bottom to cancel grams and then that's going to give us, give us moles on top. So in this case if you do the division you get 0 0.141 moles of the lead chromate. Now the last one's a really good one. Um, this one says calculate the number of oxygen atoms in 4.20 grams of sodium carbonate, uh, sodium bicarbonate or sodium HCO3. Um, so one thing that you're going to calculate in this case is going to be the molecular weight, which is equal to, of the sodium carbonate, which is equal to 84.0 grams per mole. So you'd add up the sodium, the hydrogen, the carbon, and the three oxygens, and that's going to give you 84.0 grams per mole. Now this one's a little bit challenging because we're going from 4.20 grams, and we got to get to the number of oxygen atoms in that sample. So this is going to be an example where we have to go from grams to moles and then from moles to the number of things. So we're going to have to use both the molecular weight and Avogadro's number. And there's an interesting thing. This one asks for oxygen atoms only in that sample. So we'll take a look at how we're going to solve for that. It's actually quite simple. Um, you'll notice that for every one of these for every one mole of NaHCO3, there's going to be three moles of oxygen. Now the way that I got that was, for every one mole of this, we see that there's a subscript 3 there. So we can pull that out and say, well, if I have one mole of NaHCO3, I have three moles of oxygen. So that's going to be really important in the final step here. This is this that last step actually you're doing it already because when you come up with the molecular weight you're you already recognize that there are three moles of the oxygen present and that's why you multiply the molecular weight of oxygen by three. So let's start this process. So the first thing we have to do is we have to go from grams to moles. Uh, and that's because we have to pass through moles in order to get the to the number of things. So we're going to take our molecular weight which is 84.0 grams for every one mole of NaHCO3, and we'll be careful with this. We'll write our NaHCO3 for each step. The number of moles, we can go to the number of things using Avogadro's number. So on the bottom, for every one mole of NaHCO3, we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of NaHCO3. So then the last step is going to be our oxygen atoms. So for every one of the NaHCO3, so for every one formula unit of NaHCO3, we have three oxygen atoms. And then that comes from our discussion above. So at the very end, when you multiply 4.20 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, then you multiply that by 3. Then you press the divide button on your calculator and divide by 84.0. You're going to get 9.03 times 10 to the 22 oxygen atoms. So these are some examples of how to work problems with moles and molar mass. Um, there's a whole slew of these in the textbook that you should, you should do and make sure that you can do.